Good morning, friends. It's Heather at Push Poppy Farm. I hope you are doing well. Today, we are talking all about bearded irises. Well, it's the end of September here in my home garden in uh, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area of California, Zone 9B. Our first frost is slated in the books as December 25th, but it is always in mid to early November. So um, I have to time all of my plantings at my house in my little microclimate to that date. And that means it's time to start putting some irises in the ground. Now the irises I'm going to be using um, are all the bearded varieties. So they're very fancy frilly um, and I do have some California native irises across the landscape on our property um, those are very delicate and tiny uh, not big blousey flowers they're pretty in the landscape but um, I want some bang for my buck so I have a selection of irises here that I'll show you that I'm going to plant uh, we're going to put these in the cottage garden um, which is completely overgrown right now it looks crazy but I'm not worried about that it's the end of the season I'm going to let everything stay as it is. We're going to put these irises in the ground and then in the spring we'll do some cleanup and tidy up and then everything will be ready for the show. Bearded iris. Um, when to plant these? They're probably in your local nurseries, plant nurseries right now. Even some of the box stores probably have them because now is the time to plant these plants. Now they are tubers and they'll come to you. You'll get them looking like this. So here's the tuber itself, these are the roots, and then these are the leaves, and, they're, and with most bearded irises, they're in a fan shape. And I'll show you how we're gonna plant these. Um, we're gonna have about this much sticking out of the soil. The roots will go into the soil and spread out, and that will give it a nice anchored base, and then it'll be good to go. Now they've cut these back because you want them to go into the winter with very little uh, green growth on them that could freeze. Now in my area, we do not get, we do get freezes and frosts, but it doesn't ever freeze the ground ever. So my soil stays um, soft. And in the winter time, it stays nice and moist and soft because that's the only time of year we get rain. <laughs> so um, I don't have to worry about heaving soil. If you live in a place where your soil freezes, you're going to want to, after you plant them, you're going to want to cover them either with straw or some mulch or even extra soil that will protect them a little bit from the heaving of the soil as you go through your winter. Okay, so um, if you live in a place like me that has very hot summers, arid hot summers, and not super cold winters, then late September, early October is great for planting. Um, you can still get away with this if you're in a colder zone now, but I wouldn't wait too much longer. Okay, so where to plant? Now, irises, like acidic soil, kind of a 6.8 on the pH. Um, we have very alkaline soil here. We have an eight. Uh, and I know that just from doing a little basic testing. Um, you can send your soil off to a soil testing lab, but you can also just buy a pH test kit to find out what the pH of your soil is. Um, even though they like more acidic soil, the irises that I have already planted in the cottage garden, which I'm gonna to try to put some pictures up when we get to that point, um, they don't seem to mind. So irises aren't super finicky when it comes to that. They do, however, need well-draining soil. Because they're growing from tubers, if this tuber sits in wet soil for long periods of time, it will just rot. So you want well-draining soil. If you have soil that's clay and kind of hard and sticky, now clay is great because it holds moisture, but it can hold moisture for too long. So you may want to uh, pull some of that out, mix in some uh, grit, horticultural grit or sand to loosen up those um, soil uh, molecules and have a little bit more space for air and water to move through so that the soil drains better. You can also add perlite and even just layers of compost will help loosen that soil over time. All right, so what varieties are we gonna plant? Now what I've already gotten out there, I'm gonna dig up a photo for you, is a, uh, an iris called black suited. It is 
stunning. And I put it out there uh, a couple years ago because I thought I was going to turn that in, that cottage garden into a black and white garden, but I didn't. But those they're just so beautiful. So those are already out there, but I thought I could use a few more colors. So let me show you what I've got. Now, some of these are from Shriners Iris, and I, plan I placed this order months and months ago. Um, generally, in the cut flower world, for business purposes, uh, if you're growing for, you know, production, you place your orders for things for the next year in the season that your current thing is growing. So in other words, let's say ranunculus. When my ranunculus are blooming in March is when I place my order for the next March. So uh, same thing with tulips, etc. Because um, you have to give growers advanced uh, warning of what you want to grow so that they can start them and have them ready to ship to you when it's time. All right, so some of these are from Shriners Irises, and some of them are from my local box store. So I've got a couple varieties here. This one is called Mai Tai Join You. <laughs> Very cute. So this one uh, I think is one of the only ones. I have another one here called Center Ice, which does not have a photo, which I think was a free one. Um, most of these I have multiple varieties, um, multiple numbers of. However, with irises, just like any tuberous plant, it will propagate itself by more tubers. And so over time, that clump will continue to grow. And after about three or four years, you're going to have to pull that whole clump up and divide them out, which gives you more plants for free. Um, and you can then spread them across your garden. If you don't divide them, um, they'll still grow, but they'll stop flowering for you. And you'll basically just be left with foliage. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. The closer you plant them together when you start, the more frequently you will have to um, lift and divide. So it's good uh, to plant them between 12 to 24 inches apart when you put, first put them in the ground, because that will give you about three years uh, before you have to lift and divide. All right, so continuing on. Next one. This one is called Society Page. Kind of that light pink. Then we've got <laughs> crazy name for it. Serving Wench. I don't know who comes up with the names of these, but I loved that pink and purple. And the last one from Shriners is Cloud Dweller. Now this is like a misty yellow, like a buttery yellow. Okay, so the ones from my local nursery here, um, I've got a number of these already. This is Red Hot Chili. And then we have, the price tag is on here, I apologize for that, but Autumn Circus, Rippling River, and this one's just a blue iris. Okay, so I mentioned that they have to be planted in a very specific way. So let's head out to the cottage garden and we'll talk about how you do that. Okay, pardon the look of the cottage garden. Everything's very wet <laughs> and very overgrown and also dying back in places because it's just that time of year. But you can see some green leaves here. These are irises that are already established and in the ground. Now, in about two months, real close to... Uh, the end of November, I will cut all of these green leaves down to about six inches, make them look like the ones you saw on the tubers that are already existing uh, that we haven't planted yet, so that um, they are ready for their bloom in the spring. And it will protect the leaves. They won't, I won't have to worry about getting frost, um, killing them off. So you can see this area is already in sun and this has to come out. This is just an aside, but I'm not going to worry about that now. This is part of spring cleanup. <laughs> so the places we're going to put our new batch of irises um, in here. Now I do have a lot of daffodil bulbs and tulip bulbs in here. I'm sorry, not tulips, but like fritillaries and things like that, but that's okay. Um, they'll work around each other and the irises don't get buried deep. So it's a really nice combo. I'm going to pop a couple in this little space here. We'll put a few back here. And what you're seeing here now is just um, a self heal that has been spreading through as a ground cover and I'm fine with that. I could just pull that aside. Probably will pop a couple right in there. And then I have this space over here that I'm gonna put a few in as well. So we'll start here. Since I only have a single one of these, this variety, the serving wench, we're gonna put it right here. The things I want to focus on here is I wanna have a hole that's deep enough uh, don't worry about this. This is foxglove. It will be just fine. So I want to have a hole that's deep and wide enough so that I can 
take these roots and kind of fan them out underground. Now that's a little bit too deep. And the reason is, like I said, we want this rhizome to sit kind of right at the soil surface, only partially buried. Okay, that's better. So we've got the roots in here. And you're going to say, well, that's really, really shallowly planted. And yes, it is. But this is to prevent the rhizome from rotting. And then, so you can see, we've got it sticking up above the soil there. And then I'm going to come in and give it a deep water. I'm thinking that in this area here, we do have some uh, lupine and some other stuff that looks really beautiful in the spring. But I was thinking these varieties together, the Autumn Circus and the Society Page might look really nice here together. It'll be like a pink and blue um, thing. And we've got all this blue salvia behind it. So I think it'll be really pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and scratch out. And really that's what I'm doing because these are not very big. And you can see, I'm gonna take the roots and try to spread them out a little bit so that they have some anchoring in the soil before I cover them up. And then this is gonna need a deep watering. And I will pepper the, the blue ones through here. That was Autumn Circus. Oh no, I'm sorry, that was, yeah, that was Autumn Circus. So now we'll do the Society page. Kind of like little spiders with those roots like that. I want the tops of the tuber to be visible. So not planting these deeply at all. Do another autumn circus back here. This one needs a deeper slot because it's got longer roots. So they're spaced out, not super far. They're about a foot apart, which will be great because that'll give me a couple of years before I have to pull these guys up to divide them. All right, and again, the last step after I plant all these is to give them a deep watering and then to leave them be. It is better to water infrequently and deeply with these guys than frequently and shallowly because again, you want the drainage to work out just right. So now that you've got your irises planted, you've got them watered in, what next? They're fine. Uh, you just need to keep watering them deeply, but letting them dry out in between uh, until, you know, the winter sets in and they just go dormant. Uh, this early watering cycle will allow their roots to become established and then you're good to go. Uh, they only need to be fertilized twice a year. The first time is in the early spring uh, when they just start to wake up. And the second time is after they bloom. Now, fertilization here is important. You don't need a lot. Uh, you don't want high nitrogen fertilizer because that will really only encourage green growth and not flower growth. Get something with high phosphorus. So something like a, like a, I don't know, bone meal would we work just fine. Um, and don't sprinkle it directly on where the rhizome is, right? So not directly on the tuber, but around it, kind of in the drip zone of the plant. Uh, and then water it in well so that it comes in contact with the roots. And then you're good to go. Dividing, like I said, once every three to four years, depending on how close they are together. Um, you can do this in a number of ways. You can dig up the entire clump, break it apart, and replant them. That's what the farmers do who grow these irises for us. Or you can uh, just break off pieces um, of the of it as the rate regular clump stays in the soil. You can just kind of dig around the edges and pull parts off. I personally like to dig up the entire clump uh, because um, they tend to grow from the inside out and so that that center part eventually will die off and you'll have kind of like a ring of irises and so if you take the whole clump out then you can break the whole thing apart you'll have more plants to put all over your property and um, they'll be much healthier because they're getting they're getting air and space those those tubers so that's your options um, and you don't have to be super uh, precious 
with breaking them apart. You can even take a spade and cut the whole clump into quarters or eighths or whatever. Just plant those clumps. It really is okay. <laughs> it's crazy what they will tolerate. Bearded iris, and maybe other irises, I don't know because I don't grow those, uh, prefer full sun. But if you're in a place like me where you get really, really hot, arid summers, they might appreciate a little bit of shade in the afternoon when it's hottest. So just keep that in mind when you're sighting them. During the growing season, you should uh, cut off the flowering stems at the base when they're done flowering and leave the leaves alone because just like with narcissus uh, or tulips, if you're in a place where they can naturalize, those leaves feed the tuber or the bulb or the corm for the following season. So you don't wanna cut those leaves back until it's, they're going into dormancy. And again, if you live in a wintry area, make sure that you protect the uh, rhizome that's sticking above the soil with either some straw or some leaf mulch or just some more compost, just to keep it a little bit protected from hard frost and heave and um, of the soil. Irises have very few pests that attack them. Your main potential problem is gonna be root rot. So as long as you make sure that you have full, well-draining soil and they get plenty of water, but also are allowed to dry out, you're gonna be good. Signs of root rot are mushiness around the rhizome and of course, you know, impacted growth. You can remove the rotted portion and as long as the rest of the rhizome is still in good shape, it will continue to grow. The sooner you catch root rot, the higher the likelihood that you'll be able to overcome it and keep growing your iris. And if you find that you are having root rot in a certain area, that might mean you need to re-site it so you can just dig it up and put it in a new place with better draining soil. So that's about it. That's about all I know about bearded irises. Um, I'm really looking forward to these coming in or late spring, early summer for us. They're beautiful flowers. Um, I can use them for cuts, but I have never thought to, mostly because I just enjoy them so much in the garden. They're just so stunning and they last for so long uh, once they bloom. And so um, I would highly encourage you to try a few bearded irises if you don't already have some. Uh, you can, of course, grow these in pots as well. There's nothing saying that you can't in case. And in, in fact, in pots, they will you can more easily control the drainage of the soil. And so, yeah, if you have a patio and you don't have a garden like in ground garden to put them in, feel free to buy a few and put them in some pots on your patio. As long as they can get at least six hours of sun, you're gonna have a beautiful show. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden and I will see you in the next one. Bye.